this is Gilmer, and this is my episode 10, I believe, of my Let's Play Rise, to, Rise of Prussia. And I was looking at my last video, and I realized that I'm saying um and ah uh, a lot, and I apologize for that. I know that's really annoying, and I'm going to make a concerted effort in not doing that as often. And with that in mind, let's just... Uh, said uh, let's go ahead and start when I last left you in the last episode we had just beaten this force from Austria which is led by Shashlau and um, I'm going to try and actually finish him off with Keith's army the Koniglish army and um, we're going to do that by moving into, oh wait a minute, Shashlau is the region, duh, I guess it is uh, led by Graf von Raider, Royer, Roder, instead. So anyway, we're going to try to finish him off. I'm going to leave Kurt von Schwerin's force here in the region of Brieg. And hopefully this guy will just sit here for a while and possibly just go dormant. Maybe he'll move back. He hasn't had that much success against me. He had a little success down here. But then he lost a battle in the last turn when he tried to cross the river in the face of Kurt von Schwerin's forces. In the northeast... We still have our troops here in Konigsberg, and the forces of Russia have not moved yet. In Central Europe, or Central Germany, we have the Herb Prince Karl pursuing uh, General, General Versen into Tangermunda. That is how it's pronounced, but... That's how I'm pronouncing it. Tanger Munda. Munda. And then I also looked back and realized that, no, that was my fault. I did not move Zastro into this region. I moved him up to this region, but when I decided to move everybody over here, I did not move him. I did. He was on passive posture, and I changed his posture, but then I didn't move him, so that was my fault. So I cost myself a turn there, and I haven't been able to find where the other French forces are. I don't know if they're in these regions. I don't know if they went north. I don't think they did, so I just want to make sure where they are. We I think this red line is the the border. So if they had captured any of my regions, they would it would you know the, the border would have changed. So I don't think that they've actually crossed the border into Hanover or whatever this is. It still says Hanover. It has a well, I guess it, that's the the flag is this white flag with whatever's on it. I wanted to mention, just a tangent, I wanted to mention, I did look into trying to increase the font, but it seemed a lot more difficult than I thought it was to begin with, and I didn't really make a very strong effort because it looks like you have to go in and change some files and then also change some other settings on your computer, so I did not do that. I know these, these uh, fonts are pretty tough to read. That's one store, but the little name right below the flag is very hard to read. I apologize for that. Another thing I noticed about my last video was there was a, a strange clicking noise. I think I actually fixed that so that you will not hear that clicking noise anymore. It started at about 20, 15, 20 minutes in and, and it kept on going until the end of the video and I believe I have uh, isolated that sound and we will not hear that sound again so 
we have plotted Keith Smooth. We have plotted. Well, I mean, not that we're doing anything with him. We're just leaving him in this region until Zastro gets there. Actually, what I want to do, what I should do, is let's move these guys down. Sucks. So let's make sure everyone is moving. The Riso detachment's moving. The Imhoff force is moving. The Elba army and the right wing. Okay. Because then that will have us just one region closer instead of moving up here and, and grouping everybody up here. The reason I moved them up here to begin with was because the Imhoff force was coming down and uh, it was going to take them two turns to move here anyway. So there's no reason not to you know, make this the final destination. It's closer to the to the enemy. You know, another thing that I mentioned in uh, my last episode was that I'm going to try to get Kleist to join the Herb Prince Force so he can start getting some experience and maybe uh, get him into some battles and actually promote him up a little bit. His Seniority, I think, is 208, no, 203. It says it down here, 203. So we need to get that up a little bit. There's a chance I might actually promote him more quickly, depending on what the penalty for national morale is to promote him, if I can get him to the point where he is promotable. Take a look at this Hanoverian, a lot of Hanoverian replacements. Let's actually... Do that because I have the points and I have the money. Not. Let's get a new Hanoverian general. I know I said I have plenty of Hanoverian generals, but you never know. I mean, and I might get a good general, a very good general, so we'll, there's no point in not doing it. And so. Fleming, I'm going to leave in Berlin. Kleist is moving. Fortification, no, that's the Frey Battalion. Battalion. We're going to leave him there for now until we finally get ultimate resolution on Burson's force. Because I really don't want to lose Berlin. I think that is a, would be a, a morale hurt morale some, some kind of morale hit for me just in general it doesn't look like it's really strategic at this time in the world but as we all know Berlin became the capital of Germany at some point these were all the battles we received 15 points of national morale in three battles so, yeah, we're ready to, I believe, execute a turn. Our current morale is 140, Austrian morale is 79. Man, if I could, if I could just destroy that one force, that would be awesome. So let's go ahead and execute the turn. I, I'm going to try to execute these turns a lot quicker. I know I am doing about three turns an episode and that usually runs about 50 minutes so I'm going to try to run three turns hopefully in about 45 minutes so I wanna, I'm want i not going to talk as much I don't think having said that I do think that there are a couple of things that I need to talk about that I'll probably talk about in after this turn executes because there are a couple of things gameplay wise that some people might not know and I want to make sure that they're a little bit more familiar with it because if they're a first time player they might not understand all, all these things such as why what is this uh, orange little arrow with a dot in front of it and what is this blue thing with the with almost looks like a smiley face but with one eye and we'll talk about that after this turn has executed. So let's see if anything good happens or if something bad happens. Hopefully nothing bad. 
this is something that I kind of was thinking about after I talked to some people. This is really, if you're playing Russia, you literally almost cannot lose hardly any big battles. There, you have to almost have just a string of victories. One, one, one. If you don't, you pretty much lose the game. Come on, Keith, get your rest of your army into the battle. Let's destroy this guy. I'm not going to talk over these battles as much as I used to either because I realized that my words were being drowned out. Excuse me. I wonder who they get to say those things. So we destroyed 13 more units. We lost 945 men, they lost 2,800 men. Come on, come on, our Prince Carl. We have a four to one advantage at this point. We only beat, we only destroyed five of their units, but they don't have a lot of troops. Gonna have to chase them down some more. He's really getting out there in the middle of nowhere. Armée Le Dauphine created. That's a French army. We have received a Hanoverian general. Oberg is now awaiting command. That is him, Kurt Oberg. What is he? He's a 311. Not necessarily who I would have hoped. I would have hoped for maybe a better general, but and the reason I did I just moved that troop was because that was still some more Prussian 
formations under under Zastro's command, and uh, he had this guy, uh, Frederick the Great, has plenty of command points to give up. Now this is he still, yeah, he still has plenty as well. Let's move Imhoff into Zastro. Let's see what they say. Thirty-eight of thirty-nine. So. He is at 2643. He's at 685. He's at 1467. So that's about 4,600. And then this 115. Let's move him. So 2643. Plus 700, it's 3,343 or so. 4,800, about 4,900. Let us see what kind of trouble we can get into. Four days. He's such a good He is so good with that fast mover. Within 10 days, I'm here. Um, let's do this. Let's move here. That way we can uh, be closer to Munster, which will give us supply. From there, so then we can if we'll get control of this, and the supply from Munster will move through Coastbelt, and uh, then I can on the next turn possibly depending on how much attrition has happened late September. We're really pushing it here. At least he's a fast mover. I can move back to Munster very quickly. It, something about uh, having snow on the ground and the attrition because of that snow. If you end your turn in a city region, I think the attrition, I don't know the exact numbers, but the attrition is, is uh, reduced tremendously. If you end your turn in a snow-filled region and there's no city, you're probably going to get some pretty, pretty good amount of attrition. So I want to be close to Munster because it's a huge fort, it's a huge depot, it has plenty of supply if you can see the numbers it says 2531 and 1007 which is supply and then ammunition I believe is what that is for and so yeah that's going to be pretty good I can maybe run him over hit this guy a little bit and then move him back if there's not any snow if next turn if there's snow on the ground in this area I'll probably move back to Munster but if there is, it's still clear, I'm going to move him from here. And plus, if he hasn't had any tremendous attrition happen to him, I'm going to move him from here over here and take Brereford and see if that is something that's doable. Uh, castle. What's this guy's name? Fritzler. Oh. Crap. If he was close enough. That's one thing I noticed that at, um, at the end of one of my turns before. He was close enough to Frederick the Great at one point to actually be given the core command under the army. Uh, Elba Army, and I just forgot to do it. I mean, I missed it. I missed my opportunity there. And look at that. He has nothing left, but it gives him five pips of green. That's supposed to be the amount of troops. So I'm going to do. Is Kleist in here yet? Yes. Let's give him some troops. If we can promote leader, oh, all 
third prize, Carl, has been congratulated. He is promotable. Our name Von Punzik. Look at that. His seniority is one. That's the highest you can get. And then George Von Driesen has been congratulated, and he's promotable again. Um, if I promote him, who is it going to? It doesn't. It doesn't say any penalty. I'm going to go ahead and promote him. Maybe I can get him a core command at some point under somebody. That's still that guy. He has not. He has not made any breaches. I noticed over here that they had a breach, and now we repaired the breach, and they have no breach again. Reich Army. Austria under Friedrich Zweibrücken. I get so many more men. Oh. They're offering. Screw you, buddy. I'm not going to surrender. You don't have any breaches. Why would I surrender in that case? Man, I really wish I could. One forty-three to seventy-eight. So we just gained one point last turn. I think it's time to move him back. It's late September. I don't want to be caught too far from Prague. It's time to move him back. Plus, they plus they need to they need to rest a little bit, I believe. So let's move him back. Six days. Gessler, yes. Markgraf, yes. Rex Column, yes. Cavalry Corps, yes. And um, depending on what the weather is, we'll move up here and uh, see if we can't take on the Platinet. Where's the Palatin? I guess it's just part of Austria, so you can't really get. Well, that says the Palatin, and it has a different flag. I wonder if I could, if I took Mainz, the Palatin would would jump out of the, would jump out of the war. Um, but I don't know if the Palatinates. I don't know which one of these is the Palatin city, main city. Is it Mainz? Is, is it Koblenz? Is it Köln? If you remember from To End All Wars, Koblenz and Köln were uh, very, very uh, popular, very prominent points of attack in the To End All Wars scenario. That's that's the extent I got my French and Western Entente forces to. Was basically this river, I had crossed it and um, had taken Dusseldorf, I think, and had moved on to Dortmund, Dortmund, and I don't know if I had gone as far as Munster, but this was about where I stopped my To End All Wars is when I had troops in this area and was pushing into Germany Central, or Germany proper. If you click on the portrait of the army commander over here, it will jump to that commander. And that's what I just did with Heinrich von Preussen. This is Konigsberg. It doesn't look like the Russians have moved. They have not. We're good there. And then this guy is just... I wish I had more troops in this command. Because I would go up there and... And attack him because he is getting far, far away from supply. I don't know if a fortified camp acts as a depot as well. I don't think it does because my fortified camps, of which I have three, have very little stock in them at all. That one has a little bit. 
but it's taken a little while for it to build up. Okay, what I was going to talk about is uh, stas uh, your stance of your force. If you look at these two banks, they will tell you exactly what they mean. And there's a difference if you look at, we'll take just Hans von Zeiten and show him. If you look at the bottom message on the tool tip, it says this leader can actively lead units this turn. What does that mean? You can have your general can be either active or inactive. Active means he's he's got a fire lit under him. He wants to do something. He's he's ready to go. He's organized. He has everything going, and he can move and do things. And so when you're active, you move quicker. Your troops fight better when your general is active. You move quicker, and your general and your troops fight better. Also, when you are active, you can select offensive stances. Uh, these orange and red boxes are offensive stance. This one's assault posture. This means it'll it'll fight anybody that it comes into contact with, and if there's a structure at the end of the movement, it'll assault it without sieging it. This is all out attack or and it's also hold at all costs. It goes with that really. And then the next one, offensive posture and sustained attack. These two put together means that if your forces meet up with an enemy force, there will be a fairly major battle and there will be at least three rounds of battle, something along those lines. And it will, you know, they, they, he won't immediately start thinking about retreating. He'll think about continuing the battle as much as possible, especially if he's in a, a positive or an advantageous position, advantageous, advantageous position. Sorry. Now, if he is inactive, most of these guys are going to be active because they get bonus on their strategic tip. What? rating do these generals have that will is is the driving force behind if they're active or inactive it's strategic there's a die roll based on the strategic rating if they win that roll then they're active and if you have a very good leader of the army his strategic rating will flow down as a bonus to the corps commanders so their chances of being active are a lot better as well based on if you have an overall army commander with a very good strategic rating, which Keith does. He has a six, which is the highest you can get before any battles. Six is the highest you can get on any of these before any battles. After you have battles and have won some, these numbers can go up. I don't know if strategic can go up, but obviously offensive and defensive can go up because his have gone up to seven. I don't know what they were previously. I think they might have been in the fives, but he has done so well in battles that his offensive and defensive ratings have gone up to seven. So if you don't win your role on your strategic rating, what happens? What happens is your general is inactive. And if you tooltip over one of your generals, you can see this one. About five lines down, it says this leader cannot perform offensive actions this turn. Well, since he is part of an army that is active, that really doesn't mean as much. But if he was on his own and he was inactive, the only stances he could choose are defensive posture and conservative attack. And conservative attack means they'll try to call off the battle after a couple third couple of rounds. Uh, it says he will want to call off the, the attack beginning with the third round unless the defender is collapsing. So it's 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 a, a very cautious attack. And then the last one is passive posture and faint probe attack. So inactive generals can only choose these four, the, the least offensive stat, stance. And active, active generals can choose any of these stances. So what does that mean? 
Well, some of the things that it means is that only active generals can actually assault a fort. Inactive generals cannot assault a fort because they can't put it on offensive stances. That's one of the things. Also, as I mentioned, uh, if a general is active, he moves quicker, his troops fight better. If he's inactive, there's, I think, a 35% penalty on movement and uh, fighting. His troops perform at 65% if they're attacked. So as you can see, strategic rating is very important and being active is very important as well. What are some of the other things that are possible? You can have force march. What that means is he'll try to, if, if, it, if the die roll is successful, and it says right here, it says he has a 75% chance of if you tried to do a force march that he would do it. He gets to wherever he's going quicker. But the, you lose cohesion because of that. Because it's, as in real life, if you push your troops harder than they normally go, then they're more tired. They're, you know, they're, they're very weary, that kind of thing at the end of the march. This one, enter structure. If you're... Army enters encounters a structure at the end of their move. They'll try to they'll try to enter that structure. Is all that means. Uh, split units. If you have a unit such as this guy, he has troops attached to him. You can split split the unit. This combines the units, basically the opposite of split units. And then there's this evade combat, which I've already used a couple of times. What that means is that. If you come into contact with the enemy, you'll try not to fight it. Even if they try to fight you, you'll try not to, and you try to move past them. But the bigger the force is, the harder it is to evade combat. Evade combat works best with a small force that is mounted. So basically, scouts on horses are, it's very easy for them to evade combat. But anybody else, anybody bigger than that, evade combat doesn't work very well. It says there, generals which are not activated cannot use this order. So that's another thing you can't do if you're not activated. And then let's look at this screen. This screen is where you form your armies, form your corps, form your divisions or brigades. If you have a three-star, you can form an army. And I've kind of mentioned this before. If he's not the highest seniority, which is... Conversely, the lowest number seniority, so one is the highest seniority officer, you get a penalty if you create an army with somebody who is not as senior as another person who's expected a command. Dismiss army. Sometimes there's a penalty for dismissing an army because it's kind of political. If you think about, just well, just think about World War II. You know, somebody like uh, Bernard Montgomery was, you know, a hero to a lot of British people. If if he had been dismissed for any reason, there would have been a huge political cost. So if you dismiss a general that has high seniority, there's sometimes a penalty of national morale and victory points due to that because he's a he's a popular person politically, and you know, the the other generals probably like him a lot. Or for whatever reason, if um, in World War II, Patton was he was never he wasn't dismissed until the end of the war, but he was eventually dismissed. But if they had dismissed him at during the middle of the war when he was doing real well, there would have been some national morale and victory point penalty for that under this system, as well as when MacArthur was uh, dismissed by Truman, he w there was some national morale. You know, there would be national morale type hits for that as well because MacArthur was considered very popular at the time. He even uh, considered running for president. So that's what that is, dismiss army. But you have to actually be an army before you can dismiss it. Let's put it on Keith. So see, he has dismiss army. Uh, and if I dismiss him, it'll cost two national morale and 160, 106 victory points. So that's that. Create a core. You need a two-star general to create a core, and you have to be within 
range of an army commander. And the way you see if you're within range of an army commander is you select that army and press the shift button. And anything that changed colors is in his range. I, if there was a two-star general with a lot of troops up here, I could create a core that would be attached to the Coniglish army. So that's what that button does. Dismiss core. I think that's self-explanatory at this point. There's no national morale or victory points. The penalty for dismissing a core just it's just like any army. If I dismissed the core in the U.S. Army, nobody would even realize it. Just like it in probably most every army. Brigade command. Brigade command is something like this, where you attach several forces to a general and that can be a one star, two star, or three star general that can have brigade command enabled. Now the one thing about having that enabled and if if I were to make if I wanted to make poison an army commander or probably a corps commander, I'd have to split all those attached units off of him before I could do that because he has to be by himself to be to be promoted to army command or, or corps command. He can't have troops actually attached to him as a brigade commander. So basically all that means is if he's a brigade commander, he can't be a corps commander or an army commander. But And if he's an army commander or a, big, a corps commander, this, you know, conversely, he can't be, uh, have brigade command enabled. And then there's this lastly, promote leader, which we've covered several times and this let's play so I'm not even going to talk about that. We've looked at all this. I gained four national morale, four national morale, and four national morale. So I gained 12 national morale and it's still only at 143 because of it took five national morale from me. Should be more than that though. I should be higher than 143. Or maybe not. I, I'm not sure, but I got five national morale taken from me. So it's I guess every turn it's a it's a, a minus five national morale if you've got very high morale at that time. So the the best way to defeat that is to keep gaining more national morale than is taken from you. But that's not going to happen this turn because I'm moving everybody out of harm's way because the winter's coming. So over winter. He's probably going to, the Austrians are probably going to regain a lot of national morale and I'm going to probably lose a lot of national morale. He keeps moving up. I'm wondering if his target is Breslau. So I'm going to move Kurt von Schwerin to Breslau and maybe he's going to come across and try to cross that river into Breslau. If he does, we'll be waiting. And. to destroy this guy because I do not want the Swedish to I do not want the Swedish to make any moves do anything seven and six The supply is just sitting out here all by itself. And did I do this? No, this is planned. Okay. So I planned Keith, I planned Ed, uh, Frederick, I planned Kurt von Schwerin, and I'm really just holding fast with these guys. F4, F3. Not much. F5. Then lost 118,000 men. We've lost the 43,000. So, sorry I talked to it so long on that, but I wanted to go over some of these uh, command postures that you can put your force into. And so that that's probably going to make my video run fairly long, but I hope we can live with that. I hope if, if 50 minutes or 55 minutes is too long for you guys, 
that are watching this, and I know it's not a huge amount of people, but it is, you know, at least four or five people. If 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 50 minutes is too long for you to watch at one in one session, let me know, and I'll start I'll start just doing about 30, 35, 40 minutes at at the very most. For myself, I'm able to watch 50 minutes at a time, and obviously I can record 50 minutes at a time. So that's that's why I do it. And look at this guy. Is he going? He's he's going to try to bypass Bristol. I'm not even sure where he where he's going. And this is. The, uh, the Swedish forces, the Swedish forces, and my forces trying to take them down. Retreat! It looks like Austria's Versen force has managed to retreat, but somebody else was not. This is turning out to be really a good turn of events for the, the northern Germany sector. Because this is probably completely going to destroy offensive capabilities that they have, which is great. Look at that 31 units destroyed. That is freaking awesome. And next turn, I'll just come after him again. This guy keeps... So he's going to... Oh, man. He went all the way up to Glogau. Is Glogau even... Uh, promoted him to rank of general. So now you're a two-star pal. Definitely going to ta target you again. Oh, oh. 144? Good gosh, man. Are you kidding? We gained six national morale, and we lost five due to that yeah, we lost five here, I'm sure. Yep, we lost five. Invasion of the island of X, X, minus one EP, minus one VP. The invasion of the island of X at the mouth of the Charent River by the, an English fleet. The ramparts in the village are destroyed, but a more ambitious attack is frustrated by French reinforcements on the continent, and the English reembark all their men. Ludwig von Baer has been congratulated for his action against the enemy and he is now promotable to a new rank. And that is this guy. Three hundred and ninety-five. I really need to rest. Thirty percent. I think he always was. Uh, he said, "Still at three ninety, and I took several troops out. Two fifty one." They're both from Brunswick. They're both Brunswick. So maybe I need to take these guys out. What?
bad weather, so I don't know what is going on. In 10 days, we'll be here. And if the snow is still not there yet, then I will... What's his power? See, he... He's not going to have any, any supply about Keith. We're coming for you, pal. Offering us honors of war is not going to help you. Okay. Really not much is going on. Let's see if the Russians have started moving yet. No, they're still there. That's pretty amazing. Nothing's going on over here. Oh, my God. Should be oh yeah. Create core. Has no penalties. And we can cause trouble for Get them to react to us for once. Be nice. You see what I'm doing there, don't you? If, uh, I'm trying to cut his line of regions that go all the way back to Austria. And maybe he'll start running out of supply at some point. After I move him here and take this, I will probably move back over to this area and then try to move up on him at some point. But he's still very strong. All right. Have I covered everything this time? Um, things are going okay. They're not perfect, but they're going okay. So anyway, this is the end of my episode 10 of Let's Play Rise of Prussia. I'm Gilmer, and I appreciate you watching. And leave some comments and leave some likes, and I'll see you next time.